The Sanctified Life, A Vision of Christ John calls to remembrance the wonderful incidents that he has witnessed in the life of Christ. In imagination, he again enjoys the precious opportunities with which he was once favored and is greatly comforted. Suddenly, his meditation is broken in upon, he is addressed in tones distinct and clear. He turns to see from whence the voice proceeds, and lo, he beholds his Lord, whom he has loved, with whom he has walked and talked, and whose sufferings upon the cross he has witnessed. But how changed is the Savior's appearance? He is no longer a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Isaiah 53 verse 3 He bears no mark of his humiliation. His eyes are like a flame of fire, his feet like fine brass as it glows in a furnace. The tones of his voice are like the musical sound of many waters. His countenance shines like the sun in its meridian glory. In his hand are seven stars representing the ministers of the churches. Out of his mouth issues a sharp two-edged sword, an emblem of the power of his word. John, who has so loved his Lord, and who has steadfastly adhered to the truth in the face of imprisonment, stripes, and threatened death, cannot endure the excellent glory of Christ's presence, and falls to the earth as one stricken dead. Jesus then lays his hand upon the prostrate form of his servant, saying, Fear not, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Revelation chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. John was strengthened to live in the presence of his glorified Lord, and then were presented before him in holy vision the purposes of God for future ages. The glorious attentions of the heavenly home were made known to him. He was permitted to look upon the throne of God and to behold the white robed throng of redeemed ones. He heard the music of heavenly angels and the songs of triumph from those who had overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. The Sanctified Life, Chapter 9, John in Exile